Welcome back. <laughs> it has been a while to say the least. Uh, I had serious issues with mobile phone and storage, meaning that I had to put a halt on any YouTubing because you cannot do YouTube videos if you have no memory on your phone. But the new phone has arrived. The garden is looking amazing. I feel like we've kind of missed a chapter of it, um, having been absent for a while on here. But I had to, I had to jump back on while the wisteria is clinging on. So much has changed. I walk in the door every single day and just feel like I'm stepping into a show garden. You guys saw lots of what we did over the winter. All those cold, horrible jobs of getting the borders ready, painting the fence, tying in clematis, just all of the jobs which were cold, but it was so worth it. And the garden is just looking amazing. So let's have a look. And I'm not only gonna do a tour of this border, this little bit of garden, which we call the statue garden, but I'm also gonna do you a tour of the whole lot because everything has changed. So we'll take a look at all the different zones of my garden, including all of the mess and all of the things that I've got to do. So here we go. So here we have it, the current view as you walk through the entrance. So I kind of think let's head over here. <laughs> let's start over here. We've got a lot to see. Uh, this is quite a new change. So I have moved my plant theatre over to this location because it gets less sun than being in the container garden. I still need to have a little tinker around with pots. Um, my friend picked me up some bargain pots from the guard, uh, from Carbuza. So I need to add drainage holes to them. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Since I last saw you, we've also moved a laburnum tree out of this tiny border that wasn't really bringing anything to the party because it couldn't really do much being under the wisteria so we moved it into a pot at quite a crucial time it kind of looked like it was leafing up really well um, but then I think all of its energy is going on making sure the roots are okay so it's looking a little bit sad um, but we'll persevere next year hopefully will be its year the fats here are doing really well in here I've kind of battled with lots of different things over the years, trying to get it to work, but it's kind of partial sun. Flowers don't do great in here because it is very shaded once the wisteria is in flower. Um, but I love the green look. I've also got some ferns in there um, and a hydrangea Annabelle cutting, uh, which looks like it's doing well. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. We've got a lot of wisteria petals. <laughs> On the floor let me just step back so that you can see where we're at i'm going to keep reversing all the way down the path just so that you can get full appreciation for how gorgeous this is a little bee just enjoying literally the whole thing is buzzing literally buzzing with bees um it's just incredible it's the best the best year it's ever been we were so lucky not to get um, an April frost because it can be game over and I lost hundreds and hundreds of flower buds last April because of a frost. <laughs> you can see I've literally only got to touch it and it snows wisteria, but it is looking amazing. And then let's step into my very own little show garden, which I'm so, 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 proud of and I just can't believe <laughs> just saw a little bee going here yeah it's literally the whole thing is buzzing buzzing with bees it's getting right in there yeah I, I can't even tell you how proud I am of this um, I think the transformation that's happened this year has just been incredible painting all the fencing black so the majority of everything in our garden is black anyway but I had this side in white in a natural stone color because I thought I liked that and then we decided that we were going to go with black when we decided to add the gravel um, 
but yeah it's just let me step back here so you can see the statue as well oh, I've literally got bees all around my head it's just all come together it really has so let's start in this border so I've had to plant this garden this whole garden according to the Sun really um, because it, each section of it gets a really different amount of light so this section definitely is shadier because it is sheltered by the garage so this is quite a shady border and then here this area is pretty shady and this corner is pretty shady especially when this wisteria grows even more it sticks out quite a lot um, meaning that this is pretty shady so I do alter the planting per border really um, so I've got some astilbe in this corner which I actually moved last year I had them near the pond but they didn't do well there it was too it was too sunny so they have been moved here I think they've already got flower buds on which is a massive improvement on last year these alliums look at the size of that allium I think this is a purple sensation but considering it's in the shade it looks pretty happy um, this little section here is looking a bit collapsed so there's a lot of allium foliage that I'll be able to take away soon and I have put some foxgloves in there but I think possibly uh, I might need something shade loving to go in that gap although it depends how big this Annabelle's going to get this year I'm not sure because it will spread I did have a gorgeous parahebe um, which sadly got really damaged this winter um, I get a lot of questions <laughs> about these um, over on Instagram so these are my gorgeous ferns that I got from Tesco's two years ago I think they were £2.50 they're like a lovely limey colour um, they're just amazing so I'm really pleased with those um, I'm gonna see if I can divide them this year I've never done that before but I'm gonna try some lovely forget-me-nots which do just self seed everywhere if you don't want that to happen you can pull them up or cut them before they go to seed but I kind of love it and I can always tell when they're growing in the borders so if they are a problem to me I can just whip them out um, I just spotted my first of my homegrown Swan River Daisies doesn't want to focus that's a bit annoying <laughs> why won't you focus on my gorgeous flower yeah, that's really annoying um, yeah I grew them from seed over the winter I've planted loads of them in the borders and I've still got some more that I can put out as well but I love Swan River Daisies uh, this is a hydrangea Annabelle which looks like it's not loving this boiling hot sun at the moment then I've got alliums, some nigella that's self-seeded, then the ranunculus um, are kind of coming to an end really. Uh, some more alliums, foxgloves, some seedlings on the window so. Um, then I've got veronica. Veronica is a, is a great perennial to add to your garden and it's really easy to divide. So that originally was one plant and I just chopped it in half. So I think I've probably got about four of them around the garden now. Um, they're really easy to divide. Then I have got a lovely Campanula here, which is gonna need staking, because um, that's gonna get really tall. Now is the perfect time to think about staking your tall perennials. So your Delphiniums, I've already staked all of those. Um, this isn't a perennial, this is my Larkspur, which I grew in the autumn. I've got bamboo canes in to support all of them. I've just spotted my first gladioli over there. I bought some early gladioli, but that isn't the colour they were meant to be. They were meant to be an amazing fuchsia pink. So we'll see, see what I think about those. Uh, the gorgeous clematis is looking amazing I love that 
Oh, I've got a peony really looking like it's going to burst soon. They were bare roots that I bought last year, um, which did absolutely nothing last year. And this year I've only got one bud. So I'm not sure... I mean, they do fill a good space, but I'm not sure... I'm totally set on keeping peonies in the border. They just take up a lot of space for a really short flowering period. Then we've got the, my first larkspur, which is really pretty. It's actually growing on me. When it first flowered, it was a really dusky pink and I wasn't so sure, but I love it now. And then this is my Gertrude Jekyll um, David Austin Rose, which is a year old. The boys bought that for me for Mother's Day last year and I'm going to be growing it as a climbing rose. So you can actually, so that particular variety, Gertrude Jekyll, they're, they're sort of, um, roses are like tested for their ability to be shrub or climber and Gertrude can be both. So I'm going to be growing mine as a climber, which just means that I need to be tying in the growth. Um, so when I get all my lovely long shoots, I'm going to be... I'm going to be trying something a little bit fancy actually and tying them in spirals and different shapes to create some nice structure. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love the colour. Yeah, I think I might need to give that a little bit of attention and get that staked. Then we've got my gorgeous Viscaria vulgaris, or its nickname is Sticky Catchfly. I've had this in my garden for about three years now and it's one of my favorite perennials i absolutely love it and i don't know anybody else that has it in their garden i bought mine as plug plants from jay parker's and over the years i've just divided 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 so that i've got the consistency of that plant in the front of all the borders even behind the bench um and later on in the summer or the start of the autumn I'm actually going to divide more and add it to the front of here as well. It won't get enough sun there, but I think, I think they'll be okay there. So that's looking good. I can see another one of these gladioli. Definitely not the colour I ordered, but um, we'll see. Then you might remember when I started this border transformation in the winter, that I added a lot of plug plants and one of the plants was salvia caradonna which is actually a plant that's new to me but I'm really excited to see what it looks like in the garden. I planted them en masse. I think I probably bought 20 of them maybe um, which will be way too many as they get big but while they were small I wanted the impact and I planned the planting from where I was sitting here. So I've planted them in drifts going into the border all the way along so that I'll get a consistent streak of purple running through the border, or well, that's the plan anyway. The first of the foxgloves, really looking good. Another beastie delphinium. I think that might be a white one actually. Um, then the sedum is looking really good. That's another perennial that I've had in the garden for about three years. And again, I just keep dividing it. So I've got masses of um, the same plants all along the front. Um, and sea thrift, that's another one of my favorites. Absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, lots more Swan River daisies planted in there. I've added some Gora. So yeah, oh, I've just spotted a first of my hot pink salvia so that's exciting um that climber this is my new clematis called blue angel and that probably is at the top of the fence now yeah so i need to tie that in snip the top to stop it climbing any higher and then that should bulk out a bit and i'll get flowers from that i think june maybe and then i've got a little another rose here called gabriel oak but I'm not sure that I've put that in the best position. So I might have to rethink that one because I'm not, this one can't be trained as a climber. It will be a shrub rose, but I'm not sure it's the biggest. Um, or maybe the delphinium just needs to move, I don't know. So that one's work in progress. 
This is probably my favorite color of foxglove. They're almost like two-toned. I absolutely love them. Uh, I've got a thalictrum in there. My phlox I've already Chelsea chopped. Um, you can see more of the Salvia caradonna. This wiry looking thing is my amazing solar light that looks like an allium. It's just incredible at night. Um, then let's go around to the pond. More phlox, more Veronica. So all the planting I've repeated all the way through. Um, I've then got an origeron in here. Um, I've only put three dahlias in this border this year. Three that are colours I love. I can't remember what that one is. Lavender Perfection. Then I've got Havana and Karma Prospero. So that's one. I've got another one in there. And then another one down there. So the idea being that as they grow, I can tie them to the fence because it's sometimes tricky to incorporate dahlias into a perennial border. They just can be quite messy. Um, and then I've got this wildflower here, which I'm just letting be because it's beautiful and the bees are enjoying it. So that's kind of climbing through my bleeding heart. So yeah, I'm allowing that to be there. The hostas are absolutely enormous and taking over a little bit. This is Lithrum. Um, Lithrum Roberts, I can't remember its proper name. Robert, I want to say Robert's Delight, but I'm not sure if I've got that right. I'm a, a hot, hot, hot pink Lithrum. Uh, Lithrum. I've got another one there because I divided it. Then my beautiful dwarf lilac tree. Once this is finished flowering, I need to prune its shape because it's looking a little bit wonky. Um, so I'm gonna neaten that off. Fatsia has just gone crazy. Then I've got a calla lily behind there. It's doing really well. Um, the water, the, the um, filter needs cleaning actually in the pond because I can tell there's not so much water flowing through it. Um, looks a bit of a strange shape. And then at the back, you'll see the wisteria. So this is wisteria that we trained a couple of years ago. So that's why this is flowering. This is last year's growth. So that won't flower this year, but it will flower next year. And then all of those whippy shoots will tie in. So that will flower two years later. So it's, we've managed to spread it a lot <laughs> from the main plant all the way around this new pergola. It's really quick growing. Um, the gorgeous Benny Chidori blossom tree has had the chop because it grew insane amounts um, and it got completely out of control. So we pruned that into a bit of a better shape. Um, the gorgeous, 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 gorgeous rhododendron is coming to an end, which is such a shame because it's just been stunning. When it first starts to flower, the flowers actually are really, really bright fuchsia pink. Um, but then as they come to an end, they go this pure white and then drop their petals all over the floor. <laughs> so last year it didn't flower for me because we moved it. It had been behind the pond, but I wanted it in a better location. And yeah, I sacrificed a year of flowers, but it's been so worth it because it's just stunning. Um, then I've got a hydrangea down there, which is not doing particularly well. I have no idea what it is because it came in a cheap pot that I bought. Um, it was already in there, so I have no clue what it is. Then an Acer. Then I've got some hardy geraniums. I love hardy geraniums. I think they are great for filling a space and creating a bit of impact. Um, they do need to be controlled <laughs> for sure. This has quadrupled in size. So in the autumn, I will dig that up and give it a massive chop and just give lots of different pieces to people. I have actually got some more of it under, under there. It literally gets no light under there. 
but it's it's a good bit of ground cover they definitely serve a purpose um oh yeah then the steeper grasses i had a bit of a disaster with steeper grass because i bought them from crocus and nothing happened so they've actually really kindly replaced them i didn't know crocus did a plant guarantee so yeah they've replaced them all so hopefully they will catch up soon um right let's head round to the other garden i think so through the wisteria down what we call wisteria alley <laughs> i really had intended on repainting this fencing um before the spring but it never happened um yeah so down here this is down the side of the conservatory and then round into the other bit of our garden so this is the kids garden and also my container garden which looks quite different to last time you were here um so let's whiz around here these are my gems that i grew from seed last year i love to grow perennials um because it's it's just so worthwhile, isn't it, when you're growing something that's just gonna come back every year. And I've also got some ham elm grasses in there as well. But being under the basketball hoop, um, yeah, I'm lucky if stuff survives, to be honest. Then the bamboos, that this was Ben's project last year. Um, they all seem to be okay. These were all free and they are planted in containers in the soil. You can see like this is a new shoot that's come up right at the edge of the pot so yeah they're obviously happy then this little corner is what i call the breakfast garden because it's the perfect spot to sit because you get morning sun here it streams down like the side of the house um these fats here i planted in august last year and they were that size <laughs> so they've doubled in size it was a really harsh winter for Fatsia, and that one is slowly recovering. Um, oh, Mr. Pigeon's got a twig for his nest. And the eucalyptus Ben literally moved there yesterday. That's a big old stick, mate. Oh, he's making a nest in there. Um, but I love, I just love the Fatsia so much. I think they can completely transform a space. Um, I just wanted it to look really green and jungly around here. Um, I think I might quite like to add like another little pond or I don't know, water feature or something. I'm, I'm not sure. It's kind of working progress. Uh, and those hellebores are not looking good in a pot. Um, I need to address them. <laughs> then I've got a bleeding heart and this is a gorgeous pink hydrangea that is in a pot. Um, and then my Californian lilac, which is just starting to flower. For me, this is the easiest low maintenance plant in the garden ever. I planted them as tiny two litre plants three, three years ago, two years ago, two years ago. And it's completely swamped this area. And when it's finished flowering, I need to prune it because I didn't do that last year, which is why they are so beasty then the daily of order so this is where the magic will happen but it does look <laughs> questionable right now so this is the staking method which has been extremely strong and effective for us last year so we've done exactly the same again so using steel coated um, stakes from amazon and just the cheapest garden twine i could get kind of just tie it all together and make it into a web and it just means that everything can grow through and it's fully supported right up until the dahlias come out of the ground you can't really believe the transformation that's going to happen here but it will be amazing um this clematis massively needs tying in as well this is a montana and i love it but it yeah it needs to be tied in so that's another job for the weekend um also in here i've got liatris along the front they are a favorite of mine and then the tall fluffy things are larkspur which i have been sowing 
constantly since last October. So that's why I've got so many. Then we've got the dumping ground and the last tray of pots to be planted out. I've got one canner that is okay. The rest are a disaster. And then the container garden. So I've never had alliums in the front here. They look amazing. I'm really pleased that I added them. And in the spring, I had the most amazing tulip display all the way along here and along the back. It was the first time I did it and I'll 100% do it every year because it was phenomenal. Um, I've just got to decide what colour to go for next year, really. Um, and then here we have it. This is the summer container garden. So the spring one was hellebores, tulips, violas. And now I have done my swap over and this is where we are at now. So we've still got some violas. If I keep deadheading them and feeding them, they'll probably go till late July, maybe even August. I've got a couple of dahlias in pots this year, which I haven't done before. I haven't ever grown big varieties in pots, so it is an experiment. Um, I've got labelia, and then I've got some perennials in here as well. That's Cosmos Candy Stripe. Can't believe that's flowered so early. Um, a grass. So I've got Scabiosa here. That's a lovely perennial. Geranium Roseanne. Phlox. Echinacea. I've got a Babina Benariensis in there. Um, salvia. That is Marvel Rose. These are cornflowers which I autumn sowed, pinched out and I've staked them. That's why they're exceptionally tall. It's unusual to see cornflowers like this. Usually they're quite floppy. Um, then I've got Agapanthus. GMs look really good. Um, I've got some mulva over there. This is my foxglove tree. And then a rose which I moved, which is looking a little bit sorry for itself. And then obviously I can't ignore the amazing new floating pergola that Ben built. I'm going to share more on this because I've had a lot of questions about this over on Instagram um, and it cost us £150 to build so that was for the wood, the catenary wire um, and everything you need. So we're really 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 pleased with that. It's just kind of really set that off as a lovely area and in the next half an hour that will be in the sun so this is kind of our full sun spot here really then yeah the last of the seedlings to go out is kind of the dribs and drabs you know when we all get to that point where we just want it to be over <laughs> um then i've got the zinnia loads of zinnia uh i don't know where i'm going to put them i'm undecided whether to do them in pots or put them in the border. I have got some more seeds, so I'm going to do another batch because I think I'm going to love them. Um, and then I've started to do some honesty ready for next year because they are a biennial. But I've only got three out of the six that I had sown. It looks like some of the seeds have like floated to the top. I'm not sure what's happened there. Uh, and then wallflowers, so they will be ready for the autumn. I need to thin them out. And there we have it, a tour in half an hour. So I hope you enjoyed that tour. Um, I'm so glad that I've got the phone issue sorted because I know that there will be a lot more to come. I'm gonna jump back on doing a weekly garden vlog to show you really as the garden changes because it's gonna change every week now. Um, so yeah, weekly garden vlog, we'll be back. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next week.